Wonderful. This is what I like to see. And here we go into the game three here at YCS Indianapolis. Exodia the Forbidden One going first. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure Jeff Jeffrey has the combo. I would imagine many of his opening hands have the combo. It's really a question of does Justin have a counter? Okay, so special summon junk forward, and then we summon out the connector. We know the connector gets you there. Okay, this looks like it might be a Herald. It is. It is Herald taking out the name. And that takes out the Diviner in hand. Justin down to three cards in hand. The can count will matter a lot right now. It depends on whether or not Justin has another follow-up. I think uh, there's going to be more ways, perhaps. Looks like he's a Renal, but I don't know if Junk Forward is a no, Fire No, it monster. is not. It is yes. an Earth Monster. Does it... Does it only need a Warrior Monster? Uh, or am I... Oh, oh, no, wait. no, we are, yeah, we are yeah, it is going a fire. back. Yeah, it's fire, fire only. Oh. Justin feeling pretty happy about that. I, I don't know if he has any more disruptions. You can oh, tell on Jeffrey's nice. face that <laughs> his face has soured in. Oh, man. Gotta be a fire warrior. Unfortunate combination, I would say. He has another connector in hand as well. And an ignite. Pendulum Monster, so he is unable to make a play with that current hand. Well, that depends whether or not Justin can make a play, or maybe he overcorrected his uh, new deck at post side and does not have a starter himself. It happens you, from time to time. You don't need too much. That's true. That is true. But going into a deck that can win on the very first turn, some people might overcommit because you just have to see it. Like, you have to see it. Now, Oh, wow, Justin's face looks, this is quite an entertaining match. Just watching these players really enjoying being here. Really enjoying this match, even though it's a match that you might not typically anticipate seeing. Now, knowing that Jeffrey went first, if you decide to go first, you might not put as many disruptions because you're only expecting to win on that very first turn. I, I don't think. I don't know you have your disruptions. You're not going to have any. If you're playing a strategy like this, you are not giving Dark Ruler, Evenly Mad, Feather Dust, or any of those type of cards, Santa Claus. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, no! He's proceeding to set one monster face and oh. passing turn. That that buys Jeffrey another oh. turn to try again. And he has a new normal summon. He can keep on going. We're going to see if Justin's hand has it. Uh, he, he needs to draw. He's so excited. Look at Justin Ooh. being like, you need to draw. He was so excited. He put his glasses back oh. on, ready to go. The problem here is that this probably means that Justin has interactions in the hand. So we'll see if this goes through. As I just mentioned here, now another connector has been summoned onto the field. Are we going to be able to get a peek into the hand? Or is there another divine? Oh, Ash Blossom Joy Spring preventing the peek in the hand. But there's still two warriors on the field. And will it will we get there? We got 15 minutes on the clock still available. That's plenty of time to execute the strategy. And again, he's going to win in this main phase if this combo goes uninterrupted. So there are no battle phases needed. There's the assault, a tail, two tails of the noble knights. Oh, oh, it's oh he, took, he took off the seat belt now. He's ready to go full throttle now. No holding back. And the effect to add is resolving, which I then assume going to mean that the effect to special summon from the deck is going to resolve. Can you believe what we're about to see? Yeah, I can't believe it. Right now we're seeing Exodia win. So this is the adding this is adding the pendulum skill. So you can still activate the pendulum because you just can't uh, summon out that card. And he has another copy of an Ignite in his hand. So it's actually huge that he can put both of the pendulum zones covered. His sold effect. We're going to send a, an equip into the graveyard to summon out a level one from the deck. There's the Durandal. Durandal, yep. I'm going to take a wild guess that's going to be a Renault, so they can add back the Durandal, but I could be wrong. Could be Squeak, and it could be any of these guys. He has Renault in hands already. Remember, he tried to summon, I mean, he that's could true. summon an, another copy of it. It, it, it is, is a Fire copy. Warrior. It is not restricted. You can special summon the other one from your hand just for having a Fire Warrior, so although it in and of itself is a Fire Warrior, there is no restriction. Durandal effect, targeting the Renault effect of Durandal, destroying itself, and to add a Fire Warrior into hand. This is where we're going to get Ignis. We're going to see this one play out now. It's really interesting how all these differing strategies and different archetypes overlap with each other. Now, the fact that Ignis is a fire warrior combining with the Durandal, it, it's really, really exciting to see. It's like a jigsaw puzzle that you piece together from other jigsaw puzzles, but some of the pieces still work, and it still completes the entire puzzle. I feel like a lot of pendulum strategies have historically had that type of feel to them. Mm -hmm. And we get the Templar. 
I believe that's, yeah, that's a Templar. And now Ignis is going to allow him to special summon a Ignite from his deck. That's Gallant. No, 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 that is, I believe that is Gallant. We're gonna perform a Synchro Summon. All right, we saw Warrior Rocks in the first game. And now we get to see it again here. Adding back the Ignite from the extra deck zone through its effect. Now I think it's where we're going to start to see and Beyond the Pendulum. Yep. Beyond the Pendulum. Then we're going to load the scales up. Justin's so sitting back in his chair thinking, I've seen this before. Oh, yeah. Deja vu. It's a repeat. He's repeating some of the iconic opening episodes of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, yeah. Show. This is episode one with Exodia. It is. He's just repeating it over again. Justin also sitting here for the ride now. now this might have been the case where you, you have to put in so many cards to counter the strategy, you might not have the pieces for you to start your own engine and make, make sure that you get going. I can't imagine that he would side out cards in his own deck, though, that are classified as starters. You know, I would imagine that he would side out a maybe a, a Divine Incarnate type card that obviously isn't going to line maybe up. Maybe the Nessies, Mothmans. The, you don't need those ones because yeah. they're, they're not good to open. They are pseudo starters at times, right? They can start pushing to the field, particularly a card like Mothman that can put a level four in the field. So I don't know if I necessarily side those. Oh, oh, oh here it is. Yeah, here it is. Yep. Time Star Magician searches out Exodia, the Forbidden One. Destroy. We're destroying the Time Star Magician. This is an incredible interaction. Being able to dump, dump the Blue Dragon Summoner through this interaction of protecting the Time Star Magician is genius. And uh, Selene's coming onto the field now. The one of three Selene's that we will be seeing. Oh boy. And this combo inherently puts a spell in the graveyard because of a soul day. So if there was ever that concern that you didn't actually get access to a spell and you only relied on your two pendulums, well, nope, this combo puts three, so Selene is always going to be able to special summon. Likely we're going to see a cross sheet being summoned right after this. Yep, take the Selene, take the blue dragon summoner. And we do have the, uh, the Ignis and the Draco Slayer and, and the Pendulum. We have everything we need. We have one leg. Three more to go. And now he's going to conduct the fusion summon by tributing both of these for the Dino Nister power, the mighty Draco Slayer. And that's going to trigger the cross sheep effect. Blue Dragon Summoner. And Blue Dragon Summoner left the keys on the field, decided to come back and grab them again, thanks to the effect of cross sheep. Justin just trying to check everything, make sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed by just verifying the fusion requirements, or in this case, for the alternate summoning requirements of Dino Nister Power, the mighty Draco Slayer. Second Selene. The getting any of those Selenes would be so high value. I think there's just exactly enough to do it. There's the arm. Uh, Justin's face is just priceless. And you can hear the crowd. The crowd gonna, goes wild here. I'm trying to let them take the wheel right here. Celine number three. Celine number three is going on board. He's going to do it. There's all the ton. Oh, boy. Another leg. One more piece. The crowd is chanting. One more piece. <laughs> this is a historical moment here in Indianapolis. Oh my goodness. It has been an honor to sit in the booth and watch Jeffrey in games one and three. And Appaloosa? Oh, just for the extra bet, just in case, just in case, we're gonna go into Appaloosa at the end of this. This is clean, this is very clean. We got the other arm! <laughs> and all five pieces have been assembled. The legs, the arms, the head, Exodia obliterate. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow, the crowd goes insane. <laughs> this is the kind of feature match we love to see. This is one of the most iconic events. Billy earlier today talked about this building having something about it in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. 